Vikings. It's almost Chinese New Year, which will take place on February 10th. This year will be the Year of the Dragon. The Year of the Dragon symbolizes power, nobility, honor, luck, and success. There are 12 Chinese zodiac signs, which means it takes 12 years for a zodiac to repeat itself. The signs are rat, ox, tiger, rabbit, dragon, snake, horse, goat, monkey, rooster, dog, and the pig. The legend is that the Jade Emperor, the ruler of heaven, held the race. The 12 animals of the Chinese zodiac were selected through it. This race is meant to create a time measurement for the people. There could only be 12 winners, and in order to win, the animals had to cross a rapid current river and reach the finish line on the shore. That's all for this segment. Happy New Year. Hello, Vikings. I'm Xander. And I'm Silas. According to NBC Philadelphia, a dog ate $4,000 because he was a little bit hungry. Charlie and Clayton Law, the owners of the dog, said that they placed an envelope on the kitchen counter for a home improvement project. Filled with $4,000. When they got home, there was a ripped up money all over the house and even in the dog bowl. They gradually pieced together all of the money over four days, waiting for the seven-year-old golden doodle to poop out all the money. They said they had recovered about $3,500 and had about $400 in little pieces that they were going to frame. Luckily, the dog was unfazed other than a little stomach ache. Thank you for watching, and have, have a, great a great day, day Lesher Vikings. Vikings. Hello Vikings, we know how intelligent you guys are because you pay attention in your individuals and society classes. <clears throat> we know that you know that cultures like the Aztec existed from the 1100s to 1500s and that cultures like the Olmec existed from 1600 to 350 BCE. What about at further south in the Andes Mountains and the Amazon Basin? No, we're not talking about the Corral Supe civilization of Peru, which has pyramids about 100 years older than the pyramids of Egypt, or the Inca ca capital and civilization further south in Machu Picchu. We are, however, talking about a newly discovered city in the Amazon areas of Ecuador. According to the Good News Network, archaeologists have used what is called LIDAR, or an infrared light imaging technology to locate evidence of lost civilizations under the trees and vegetations of the Amazon rainforest. That's right. What was once discovered with shovels, brushes, and heavy machinery is now being unearthed with the use of ladder technology. For right now, little is known about the people who lived in the city, in the city close to 3,000 years ago. Evidence of the terrest, terraced land and drainage ditches found indicate that people who lived here in the Ocano Valley of Ecuador grew corn and potatoes like other native civilizations in, of the area. This is proof that the area was more populated than we believed it to be. Archaeologists suggest that we will continue to find lost cities that thrived in pre-Columbian America. That's all for today. Thank you. Hello, Hello Lesher Vikings. Vikings. I'm Evelyn. And I'm Sylvan. Do you like sloths? If so, this segment is for you. Did you know that there are only six species of sloth? That's right. There are three types of uh, three-toed sloths and two types of two-toed sloths. Here's some weird facts about sloth. One is that they only poop around once a week. This pal can weigh over two pounds. Another thing is that they are three times stronger than humans, and they can even do pull-up with one arm. One more is that sloths are faster when swimming rather than being on land. Unfortunately for our little sloth friends, the three-toed pygmy sloth is critically endangered. The WWF's most recent estimate was that there were only 48 left in the wild. The main cause for the decrease in all sloths is deforestation. Escudo de Braguas is the only island that the pygmy three-toed sloth can still call home. And while the island is protected, their numbers still sadly decrease. If you want to help save the sloths, you can go to the WWF's fun page and search sloths to donate money to help save them. That's all for this segment. Happy, Happy weekend. weekend! Good afternoon, Lesher Vikings. My name is Nicola, and today I'll be showing you some ocean creatures that you probably don't ever want to see, and also probably have never heard of. The first one is the sarcastic fringe head. At first, they might look pretty cool, but if you provoke them, they will open their mouths and attempt to fend you off, which would be startling and quite frightening. Sarcastic fringe heads eat large amounts of squid eggs, and they live off the coast of California. Next is the dragonfish. They live in very deep waters and give off their own light, making them very hard not, not to notice. They have razor sharp teeth and eat small fish. Another sea creature that I never want to see is the fang tooth fish. Fang tooth fish live in super deep, super deep in the ocean water. They have big heads and long fang like teeth. Though they may look menacing, these fish are actually harmless to humans. That's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Bye, Vikings. I think this
this guy's coming. No. Oh, look this way. Yo, what's happening, bro? Hey, Lester Vikings, I'm Ezra, and an Idaho man was recently arrested for stealing a single engine plane in North Las Vegas and flying it over 100 miles to Barstow in Southern California. Damien Zuckatis was taken into custody on December 30th, 2023, in San Bernardino County, California. He is now facing charges of possession of a stolen airplane and taking stolen property over state lines, according to the County Sheriff's Department. Authorities also say deputies found a stash of beer and alcohol on the plane. Air Force Search and Rescue notified the plane's owner when the aircraft emergency transmitter was activated. When the owner of the aircraft went to check on it, he was surprised to find that it wasn't in the hangar. The Federal Aviation Administration soon contacted the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department and told them that the missing plane had landed near Barstow Daggett Airport. Zucca Itis tried running away when he was questioned about the aircraft, but he was soon captured and arrested. That's all. Have a great weekend, Lester Vikings. Hi Vikings, I'm Xander, and today I'm talking about the Russian man who was able to get on an airplane without a passport or ticket. According to a complaint filed on November 6, a man showed up to customs without a passport or a ticket. When customs searched his bag, they only found a Russian identification card and an Israel identification card. Later, he was charged with being a stowaway on an aircraft and pleaded not guilty. The man gave false information about his flight, saying he left his passport on the fli flight and also claimed he had not slept in three days and did not know what was going on. The man also said he had no idea how he got through security and told officials he might have had a ticket to enter the plane. And in the end, he was kept in custody custody until a trial scheduled on December 26. That concludes this story. Have a good weekend, Lesher Vikings. Hey Vikings, did you hear about the woman who gave birth in a McDonald's parking lot? Yep, you heard me, a McDonald's parking lot. Anna Elizabeth was pregnant with her third child when she started feeling contractions at around 11 a.m. on January 11th. Beck's water broke shortly after. In the moment, Beck and her husband, Daniel, weren't thinking about the snowstorm that was going on outside. When babysitters arrived to watch over her kids, Beck wasn't sure if she'd make it through the weather to the hospital. Open quote. I did feel like the weather would make the drive longer and more dangerous, but I thought we'd still make it to the hospital quickly at first. Close, close quote. Beck shared. She told her husband to pull over as she felt she was sitting on her baby's head. The couple pulled into a McDonald's parking lot and immediately called 911. Beck climbed into the back of their SUV and waited as long as she could for the paramedics to arrive. The paramedics arrived just in time to catch her baby. The Beck's baby, Micah, has been Mc nicknamed Little McFlurry for obvious reasons. Well, that was an interesting story, wasn't it? Have a great weekend, Vikings. Hi, guys. Camden here. Today on Combat Chronicles, we have two characters from two very popular games. Steve from Minecraft, and Sans Undertale from Undertale. It's my time to analyze their weapons, experience, and skills to figure out who would win in a fight to the end. Let's start with a more popular character, Steve. I know most of you think Steve is powerful, but you underestimate his power. Let's say Steve is holding a water bucket. When taken to the max, one water bucket can hold four quadrillion pounds. Now, that's a lot, but ice also makes water when broken, but ice can stack. Now then, nine ice can make one packed ice, which can stack, and nine packed ice can make one blue ice, which can stack. This means one blue ice is 324 quadrillion pounds, but blue ice can stack. And blue ice can go into one slot of one shulker box. That means if you pack your inventory with shulker boxes full of blue ice, Steve is hopping around effortlessly while holding 20 quintillion pounds. This means that Steve can hold most of the moons in our solar system and some of the smaller exoplanets while hopping around with zero problems. This means Steve punching force is 8.9 quadrillion newtons of force, or enough to kill the entire human population 128 times over. Steve has also been able to use potions, armor, shields, elytras, and other things to fight opponents. Running at 11.5 miles per hour, Steve is one fighter to contend with. Now let's go to the other end of the spectrum with everyone's favorite funny skeleton, Sans Undertale. Sans shares with his brother two unique abilities, the ability to directly attack a person's soul and to use Gaster Blasters, a giant creature that blasts lasers out of their mouths. 
Sans has a unique thing when it comes to health. He has one hit point, and any good attack, or any attack in general, will take him out, but he's also extremely hard to hit. Sans can also move faster than the speed of light when dodging and possibly even pause time. With these insane powers, both these two fighters are prosperous powerhouses, but which one would win? The answer is... Sans Undertale. Now I know what you're thinking, Camden, Steve is 1 billion times stronger than Sans. How would he lose? Simply, what's the point of being stronger than someone when your opponent is faster? Steve beats out Sans in most categories, but because of Sans' speed and possible time stopping, more often than not, Sans would kill Steve before he could even get a hit in. For the second coming end, however, I have a reminder. If you go to the link on screen, you can vote in the next episode of Combat Chronicles. As for the original character tournament, all character slots have been filled up with some amazing characters. If you want to see if your character got in, go to the form. That's all for now. Peace. Hi, Lusher Vikings. I'm Sawyer, and my friend Kellen here is going to be helping me with today's segment. This is a survey where we will ask our peers if they would prefer news be told by AI or humans and why. After that, we have a segment made by AI about AI, which we will compare to a segment made by us about AI. Finally, we will show you some bloopers from our videos. We hope you enjoy this. Hi, what's your name? I'm Ruby. And I'm Macy. I have a question for you. Would you prefer news be told by human or AI? Um, I would say humans. You? Uh, yeah, probably humans. Why? Um, I think it's more realistic. And since they're like actually in this world, like getting information from others, they could tell better news. Mm -hmm. And you? And I think that it is, I prefer also humans because humans are more realistic, they're real people, and also they could get false information if it's AI. Thank you. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Uh, my name's Ryan. Hi, Ryan. My name's Kelly. Would you prefer news be told by human or AI? I I think human because it feels more personal. That makes sense. No. I hadn't thought I hadn't thought of that reason. I prefer it because it's more emotional. Uh, thank you. Bye. Yeah. Hi. Hi. What's your name? William. Hi, William. My name is Kellen. Hi, Kellen. <laughs> I have a question for you. Would you prefer news be told by human or AI? Probably humans. Why? Because AIs can like tell fake news and it would probably sound pretty real. Mm, yeah. I prefer humans because they're more emotional, more realistic. Yeah. Just because. Mm -hmm. See ya. Bye. Hi. What's your name? Mr. Zach. Hi, Mr. Zach. I'm Kellen. Hi, I have Kelly. a question for you. Okay. Uh, would you prefer news be told by human or AI? Human. Why? Uh, not like humans are perfect or anything, but I just feel like I can trust a human. Um, and sometimes AI has seemed to make things up at times based on what knowledge it has. I said humans don't do the same thing, but for now I just trust humans a little bit. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye. You're welcome. Bye. Hi. Hi. What's your name? I'm Hunter. Hi, Hunter. I'm Kellen. I have a question for you. Yeah. Okay. During it. Would you prefer news be told by human or AI? Okay. Human. Why? Um, because I feel like it'd be more realistic. And you could just like see emotions, mm -hmm. I suppose. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hi. What's your name? Ripken. Hi, Ripken. I'm Kelly. Nice to meet you, Kelly. I have a question for you, Ripken. What's the question? Would you prefer your news be told by human or AI? Human, because I feel like AI can make up it. Welcome back to our segment, where we explore emerging technologies that promise to shape our future in fascinating ways. Today, we delve deep into the world of artificial intelligence, or AI, and uncover the incredible benefits it brings to various industries. From healthcare to transportation, AI is revolutionizing the way we live and work. Get ready to be amazed as we break down the mind-blowing possibilities and advantages of AI in this captivating segment. Let's begin by exploring the remarkable impact of AI in the field of healthcare. AI algorithms can analyze vast amounts of patient data, enabling early detection of diseases, leading to more accurate diagnoses and personalized treatments. Imagine the countless lives saved through the power of AI. Additionally, 
AI-assisted robotic surgeries bring unparalleled precision, reducing risks and recovery time. The potential of AI extends to drug discovery as well, where AI-powered algorithms speed up the process of identifying and testing new treatments. AI in healthcare is a game-chainer, bringing hope and a brighter future for patients worldwide. Now, let's shift gears to explore another realm revolutionized by AI transportation. Autonomous vehicles powered by AI algorithms promise safer roads, reduced traffic congestion, and lower carbon emissions. These self-driving wonders adapt to changing road conditions in real time, making human errors a thing of the past. With AI-enabled navigation Hi Lusher Vikings, it's us again and we hope you enjoyed that interview and all AI segment. Now we will be presenting a segment where we tell you about the latest news in AI. We will be starting with how the world's most popular AI company, OpenAI, has banned politicians from using it for campaigning purposes. This is due to the fact that politicians were using AI to generate extremely believable lies, something AI is very good at. According to the Washington Post, other AI-making companies like Google and Meta have followed suit with OpenAI, making it practically impossible for politicians to use AI. We, we hope you enjoyed this segment, and we'll see you next time on KLIB. What's your name? Ruby. I'm Ruby. I'm and I'm Macy. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Hi. What's your name? Emma. Hi, Emma. I'm Kelly. I have a question for you. Yes. Um, would you prefer news be told by human or AI? Oh, I think you Hi, what's your name? I'm Ruby. And I'm Macy. Hi, I'm Kelly. I have a question for you. Would you prefer news be told by human or AI? It's a lot. Um, I would say human. Yeah. Why? Um, I think yeah. it's more realistic yeah. and they're actually yeah. living yeah. in... Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, okay. that's what I'm supposed to say. Yeah. You don't have a script. Okay. Cut. <laughs> Welcome to Lecture Improv. The segment where there is no script. We are your hosts. Will. Claire. And Anaya. Today's teachers are... Mr. Swan. And Miss Abluda. Now without further ado, let's start Lecture Improv. Okay. Oh, goody. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> okay. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. My bracelets. I left my bracelets. Oh, okay. I'm going to go make some. Okay. Oh, Travis Kelsey. Oh, my gosh. I love football because Taylor loves football. And I love the number 13 and 1989 and blue and cardigans. Oh you know God. more about me than I do. <laughs> oh my gosh. Shake All I do is shake it off. Shake it off, girl. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, as a reward for participating, uh huh, we got you <gasps> some of your favorite candies. Oh my gosh. Yes, Miss Jennings. Yes. Oh, thank you guys. <laughs> Go, Taylor. Go, Tay Tay. <laughs> I'm Ezra, and if you have ever opened a holiday-themed Reese's Peanut Butter Cup and been disappointed to find that it did not have a cute face, then you're not alone. A Florida woman is upset that Reese's holiday-themed chocolates do not feature the same cute designs she claims were shown on the packaging and is suing the manufacturer Hershey's for false advertisement. In a lawsuit filed on December 28th, Cynthia Kelly sued Hershey's for $5 million, saying that the company misled buyers with false and deceptive advertising on their packaging. This is a class action against Hershey's for falsely representing several Reese's peanut butter products as containing explicitly carved out artistic designs when there were no such carvings on the actual products, the lawsuit said. According to the lawsuit, Kelly bought a packet of Reese's peanut butter cup pumpkins in late October because she believed that the product contained a cute looking carving of a pumpkin mouth and eyes as pictured on the product packaging. But upon opening it, she was disappointed to discover that the product did not contain the cute face. Plaintiff would not have purchased the Reese's peanut butter pumpkins if she knew that it did not have the detailed carvings of a mouth and or eyes as pictured on the product label, the lawsuit said. The lawsuit mentioned several other holiday-themed products such as ghost, bat, football, and bell-shaped treats. A few images posted on the internet show a side-by-side -side comparison of the packaging and the actual product. For example, with the Reese's pumpkin, the package showed a jack-o'-lantern design, but the candy inside was simply blank. 
The lawsuit also had photos of a Reese's football and said the chocolate looked like an egg. Although today, many people find Hershey's holiday-themed peanut butter cups to have very deceptive advertising, that hasn't always been the case. The lawsuit alleged that two or three years ago, the packaging did not have intricate details and matched the product. That's all, Lesher Vikings. And what do you think? Do you think that Cynthia Kelly should win the lawsuit? Hi, Lesher Vikings. I'm Cormac. And I'm Nyan. And the NFL playoffs are going on right now. It's the Ravens playing the Chiefs and the Lions are playing the 49ers. It's very surprising to see the Detroit Lions in the conference championship because they only have made it there once. And have never made it to the Super Bowl. The Niners, on the other hand, have appeared in the conference championship 18 times and are 7-11 and currently. The Chiefs will probably have their hardest matchup of the season. A lot of the people are predicting that the 49ers and the Ravens are going to play in the Super Bowl and are saying the Ravens will win. What do you? Th- Who do you think will make it to the Super Bowl? Have a great, great weekend, weekend, Vikings. Vikings. Hey Vikings, quick story here. The Boy and the Heron won the Golden Globes Award for the Best Animated Feature Film. On the topic of the Golden Globe Awards, the host for the awards, comedian Joe Coy, threw out a joke that Taylor Swift didn't really like. Her reaction went viral over the internet. Quote unquote, we came on after a football doubleheader. The big difference between the Golden Globes and the NFL. On the Golden Globes, we have fewer camera shots of Taylor Swift. That's all. Hope you enjoyed this segment. Welcome back to the fourth episode of Five Silly Questions. And if you're wondering why I said fourth, uh, due to a variety of reasons, I cannot air a segment of Five Silly Question and Last KLIB. So, as my apology gift to you, I am airing two. Um, the previous one, I mean the one going next, um, will will be the third episode. Um, it was filmed before winter break. Um, okay, so. Today, I will be interviewing Mrs. Richie. Enjoy. Okay, so this first one is submitted by a lesser Viking. Um, um, if you had to have any other job than teaching, what would it be? I would like to sail a boat for a living. Go on the ocean and sail and just live in the sun and enjoy the water. All right. Um, number two, what would be the silliest thing to wear as a hat. I think another lusher teacher would be the silliest hat to wear <laughs> around here. Like I think that that'd be a really silly hat. <laughs> wait, wait, but like like a cardboard cutout or like an actual No, like, like a teacher. <laughs> like, like, an actual. like you're like an elephant, you know, like who they have like the people on top of the elephants. But you're like wearing like a harness and they're like sitting up on your head. <laughs> that that would be awesome. <laughs> oh no. Okay, if you could spend the day with one famous person who would it be and why? I think it'd be Jennifer Lawrence. Like, I just think she's super funny and engaging, and I just think she'd be like a super, really fun person to hang out with for a day. Mm-hmm. All right, if you could swap places with one person, who would it be and why? And this one doesn't have to be a famous person. Okay, I was thinking my daughter. She's in second grade, and I just think it'd be really cool to kind of see what she does for a whole day, especially if I knew what I know now, and I could go back to second grade and just be like a little second grader. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you had to eat something really gross, how would you survive the process? With a giant paper clip on my nose. Oh yeah. So I want to taste it. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right. That was all the questions. And and if you want to submit your own question or teacher to be featured on this episode, sorry, um, show, um, just follow the link below. Welcome back to the third episode of Five Silly Questions, the segment where I interview teachers with five absolutely ridiculous questions. Today, I'll be interviewing Miss Spear. Enjoy. Okay. Okay, so these first two questions um, were actually submitted by my, my song students at Lesher. Um, I'll give the link at the end. if. If any of you viewers want to suggest a question. Okay, number one. What two animals would be the creepiest if combined? Okay, I think any sort of like really large squirrel would be very creepy and terrifying. So I'm going to go with a squirrel and a blue whale. Oh. 
Okay, what is your favorite smell? Oh, that's so hard. Probably my mom's chocolate chip cookies. Oh, yeah. Um, what's the funniest thing you remember doing in elementary school? Um, one time, I accidentally left my little sister who was in kindergarten at the time on the bus. I just got off of the bus at our house without her and I didn't realize it at all. And I felt very, very bad afterwards, but they did find her like 45 minutes later sleeping on the bus. So, oh, yeah. All right then. Really if it was for sentient and could fight, which food would be the champion? For sure a pineapple, because they have built-in like spiky armor, and I feel like they have spikes, like spears, right? Oh yeah. So that would be super powerful, so pineapple. Okay, if you could have a million of one kind of pet, which would you choose? I would duplicate my current dog a million times. Oh yes. Yes. Now I'm just imagining having a million of my own dog. I know, it would be a little overwhelming. I don't think my house can fit that many, even though he's <laughs> small. Um, all right, um, that wraps up all the questions. And if you want to suggest a question or a teacher to be featured on Five Silly Questions, just follow the link. Hi Vikings! We're on yearbook. You're running out of time. Order your yearbook before January 26th. You need a yearbook. Because it has awesome memories of this school year. Last year we sold out. Order yours today. Bye Vikings!